Hi there, friends. Welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, and we live here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today, I thought I would share with you some of my bird feeder accessories that I have around the gardens in different areas. Birds are a wonderful addition to your garden. If you're not gardening for birds, I hope you'll start soon. Planting things they enjoy eating and putting out bird feeders and bird baths for the birds and bird houses is a wonderful way to add life to your garden. Come with me and let's talk about the different ways that you can bring birds into your gardens. I have a special affinity for birds in the garden, and I think that's probably because my maiden name, my last name when I was young, is Bird. And so I have lots of bird art, I have lots of uh, bird houses and other things in my home and in my garden that relate to birds. Now in the garden, if your garden doesn't have wildlife in it, then you're not really truly yet part of your ecosystem. And I think, this is my opinion, that a garden isn't complete until you have butterflies and birds and all the insects and all of the wildlife in your neighborhood coming into your garden. And yes, even those deer or other pest animals like raccoons or bunnies, those are part of your ecosystem. So I'm a big proponent of not hurting any of the wildlife, whether they're mammal, aviary, or insect wildlife in your garden. I generally try to find a nice balance between gardening for my pleasure and gardening for the wildlife around me in a natural ecosystem. So to bring birds into your garden, uh, the first thing you should do, and some people say the only thing you need to do is to plant plants that they love, plants that feed them seeds, plants that provide them cover for uh, hiding from predators, plants that they can use to uh, use materials to build their nests and plants that they can build their nests in like trees or shrubs. So that's the main thing. And if you go online to various websites, Audubon Society, other natural resource uh, websites, you can find all sorts of resources and information about bringing birds into your garden. Now, one of the things that I love to do, especially in the fall and winter, mostly winter, is put out bird seed in bird feeders. Now I have several different kinds of bird feeders around the garden and I'll link some of them down below. And today actually I have two new bird feeders that I want to share with you. They were given to me to try from a company called Luji. It's an online retailer. You can find them on Amazon or on their own website and I'll put all those links down below in the description box. Luji sent me out this beautiful new hummingbird feeder that's made out of blown glass. And they also sent me a bird feeder out in the front. It's one of the kind that you suction cup onto your window so you can watch the birds eating from the bird feeder from inside your home up close at the window. But I also have several other types of bird feeders. As you know, I have my NetView bird feeder cam back there on the post. I've posted about that a few times before. I also have some regular old bird feeders that I've purchased at the Home and Garden Center or at Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart or Kmart or Target or any of those other sorts of places. I have actually so many bird feeders that I've gone through because they get used so much. I've almost always had a bird feeder out here in front of our sunroom windows. I love to sit inside the sunroom in the morning drinking my coffee, watching my YouTube channels that I follow, and watching the birds on the feeder. Luigi was really generous and gave me one of these clear acrylic window bird feeders. This is the kind that you can suction cup onto the window and watch the birds from inside. Well, installing that couldn't have been any easier. I guess the easier thing would have been if I asked somebody else to do it. This time of year, we don't have birds on the feeder, so um, I am unable to give you any footage of birds on my window suction cup feeder that I got from Luigi. However, I know the birds have been there. My husband said he saw some, but he couldn't get his camera out in time to get any footage of it. Um, as far as this brown bird feeder goes here, this is so old and I continue to use it, but the deer are what eat the, um, the seed out of there. And if the deer don't get it overnight, then the squirrels get it. And if there's any left over, then the birds come and clean it up. Uh, mostly we get birds on the ground eating what the squirrels and deer have spilled. 
Now, there are some health and safety concerns about bird feeders that you do need to keep in mind if you're going to be putting out seed for birds. First of all, they don't really need bird feeder seeds in the summertime. Um, they have plenty of insects, hopefully, in your own garden. They're helping you take care of the, um, the pest insects that you have. Worms, caterpillars, moths other insects that the birds eat. They also have the seeds off of your ripening flowers, trees, and shrubs. So in the summer, it's really not necessary to put out bird feeders except for one particular kind, which I'll talk about in a minute. But in the winter, when all of the plant material in the area has died back to the ground and uh, the birds are a little bit hungry, the ones that stay in your area that haven't migrated, they could benefit from a bird feeder in your garden. Now, the health and safety issue is to make sure that you are regularly cleaning out the bird feeder, especially there are places in North America, up in Canada, and maybe in New England, and maybe in the upper plains in the Midwest, um, where there's actually diseases that are being transmitted around our bird feeders. And so if that's happening where you live, then please follow your local guidance of your naturalists and uh, your state or province associations that care for these things. And if they're telling you don't put out bird seed, then please don't put out bird seed. However, if you're not in one of those areas, then when you put out bird seed, please make sure that you regularly clean it out. And I don't mean just dump out the old and pour in the new. I mean scrub it with soap and water so that any disease that is hanging around because of the presence of a diseased bird that isn't spread to other birds. Please take care to clean out your bird feeders on a regular basis. Now, the one kind of bird feeder that is very useful to have in the summertime is a hummingbird feeder. Hummingbird feeders are really easy to put up and take care of. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and styles, and you can get them at the Dollar Tree. You can spend, I don't know, as much money as you want on a hummingbird feeder. I have this new hummingbird feeder here today and I'm going to put in some footage right now about that product. I had audio problems on the day of this filming so please uh, forgive the voiceover but I was really pleased with the beautiful color of this bird feeder. It's kind of a teal glass with yellow and white spots and streaks in it in the shape of an ice cream cone swirl. Now the feeder saucer at the bottom is made out of metal. I really appreciate that because it makes it so much easier to clean. It has five little flowers made out of metal that the birds can come and suck the nectar out of the bottom tray. It's super easy to fill up. You just put the nectar into the glass and then screw the feeder plate on and then do a quick flip, turn it upside, well, right side up really, and you're ready to hang it. Now it comes with an ant moat also. So what you do is you use that double hook to hang the bird feeder with its nectar in it. And then you fill that cup up with water. And then the ants who try to climb down the hook toward the feeder can't get past the water. So that keeps your hummingbird feeder ant free. After I filled it with hummingbird nectar, it wasn't long before I was able to capture some really beautiful videos of hummingbirds visiting the feeder. Stay tuned. After the end of the whole video, I have more bird footage if you want to see more. Now, once again, when you're using a hummingbird feeder, you need to make sure that you keep it clean. I only put in about this much nectar into the feeder at any given time, and I only keep it in there for about two, maybe three days. I watch the nectar. I make sure it's not cloudy. If it is cloudy, then you know that it has spoiled and you need to get it changed out immediately. Now, I only have one or two hummingbirds that come to this feeder. I've seen a male and I've seen a female. I have seen two males chasing each other around, so I think the male that visits my feeder has claimed it as his own, and he's chasing off a male competitor. If you have that problem in your garden, I've read, I haven't tried it, but I've read that if you hang two bird feeders, two hummingbird feeders, in places in your garden where they're not in 
line of sight of each other, then one hummingbird can claim one as his own and the other hummingbird can claim the other as his own. And so then maybe you'll be able to draw more than one male into your garden. I've also seen photos uh, and videos from places that have, I don't know, 50 hummingbirds all on the same feeder. And I guess that happens when there's a really dense population for them. So they can crowd and, and really flock to a hummingbird feeder. But I don't have that scenario in my garden. Now I do have a hummingbird attachment on my net view feeder over there and I have been able to capture some video of hummingbirds on that feeder too. So that's really a lot of fun for me. I've really been enjoying that. Now let's talk a little bit about bird houses. I am not an expert on bird houses. I know a little bit but uh, I can just tell you what my experience has been. This birdhouse is a beautiful one that I was given for Christmas from my uh, son, daughter-in-law, and grandkids. My grandson picked it out for me, I'm told. I love it. It's so pretty. And I have it hanging here on this walnut tree. I uh, put it up in March or April this year, and then we did get a family of wrens making a nest in this birdhouse. I really enjoyed watching them as they were coming in and out to and fro. And we were able to see a male and a female taking turns. And then I believe they did have a family of eggs in there, a family of uh, nestlings. But then I went away for a long weekend in the end, uh, middle of May. And when I came back, the nest was empty. The birds had fledged and gone off to live life in nature. So now the task is to take this down and clean it out so that they can use this again for another nest in the future. Now I'm gonna wash my hands very carefully because I don't want any mites or any other disease after this is done. And I see there are earwigs and other nasties in there. So you know what, let me get some gloves. Get a little closer so you can see a little bit better. Um, this nest is virtually stuffed to the brim with nesting material. So I'm just gonna clean this out and then the birds can come back and make another nest next time they want another nest. Wow, they did a really thorough job. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? This is chock full of earwigs. Nice. Not nice. I really don't like earwigs. Get out of there, you. How am I going to get these out? All right, well, I'm just going to set this down and hopefully they will crawl out on their own. There's one. All right, so that's my plan for this. Just going to set that down on the ground with the back of it open on the ground so hopefully the earwigs will climb down out of it and into the soil where they belong. I do not like earwigs because they eat my hostas, they eat my vegetable plants and other plant material around my garden. However, I'm told that they also eat aphids so it's probably why I don't have a whole lot of aphids because I have a whole lot of earwigs. Anyway, so if you're maintaining bird houses, then you need to definitely clean them out and um, get rid of any nesting material from one nesting season and then leave it clean and empty. And then the next time the nesting season comes around, you can make sure you can be sure that your birds have a nice clean cavity in which to build their nest. Um, there's some more nesting sites in my garden I want to show you. Earlier this summer, I think I showed you already, I have a robin's nest right up here in my clematis on this arbor. It's empty right now, but earlier in the season, this nest had 
beautiful robin eggs in it and it was just so lovely i did not keep track of them so i didn't watch them hatch and fledge but just knowing that the the birds are finding places in my garden and i know there are many other bird nests in my garden as well just knowing that they're here just makes my heart happy to know that they're finding homes in our gardens i don't know if you guys can see but there's a cardinal in this shrub right now flitting around inside there and I believe that's the cardinal guy. Oh, here he is over here now. I believe that's the cardinal, the male cardinal that was making a nest in our um, front holly shrubs. We've had two or three different kinds of birds making nests in these shrubs right here, which I love because they flit about and I can watch them from inside the sunroom. In addition to being beautiful garden art, I love this dovecote birdhouse that we have here. It has a copper roof and it's painted white. We got this at the farmer's market in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it has eight cavities in it. The roof comes off so that you can clean out the inside, and it is just so beautiful. I love having this in our garden. Again, we put it on this post right here on the south side hill so that we can sit in our sunroom in the mornings and watch the birds coming in and out. And I tell you what, it is so lovely to see how many bird families we do get making nests inside that lovely birdhouse. It's my husband's job to clean out this bird feeder because it requires the use of a ladder, and that's not really something I love to do. So he gets out there, usually sometime in the winter, and cleans it out cleans out all eight cavities, takes off the roof, and gets it all clean out inside so that in the spring the birds can come back and have a new generation of bird families in there. Another important way to invite birds into your garden is to offer them clean water on a regular basis. I have this bird bath that we've owned for, gosh, 20 or 25 years. It's made out of copper, but it's pretty much gotten uh, uh, patina on it now, so you can't really tell that it's copper. Um, and I try really hard to clean this water out every morning um, because the birds use it i've seen them on there so many times they really do come in here and bathe get the dust off of themselves they drink from this and um, i've seen lots of flying insects also sitting right here on the edge and drinking in there so i know this is serving my wildlife population very happily and so i keep it clean and change the water out every morning and um, this is a really important part of bringing wildlife into my garden. I think I'm going to be adding more bird bass to the garden over time, but for now, this is the main one that we use. I love it. I have just a couple more things for the birds in my garden down in this area. Come on down and let's take a look. This is a sweet little dish that my uh, kid gave me for Mother's Day. It used to be painted, but it's been sitting out in the in nature and so most of its uh, color has faded but it's a sunflower with a little bird sitting on the edge and I love it and I just hang it here sometimes I'll put fresh water in here sometimes I'll put bird seed in here often it's just filled with debris from the overhead leaves falling down but I think it just makes a nice little accent down here a little snack you might say for birds now and again I do have one more bird bath in the garden and that's this little one here it hides here under the hostas and I'm not as good about cleaning this one out every day as I should be so you can see right now it's actually got some leaves that fell down into it and I need to clean it out uh, so let me do that real quick This is a sweet little dish. I got it for Christmas again from my daughter-in-law and grandkids and my son last Christmas. Got two little birds on the edge. She knows me well. She knows that birds are my jam. And it just sits down here and nestles in and offers a little bit of water for any birds that find it or maybe the squirrels need it or maybe a toad or a frog happens by. And this is a little, little surprise water source for that. Also back here, this is a whole other video. I should really do a whole video on this, but let me show you what I've got going on back here with those rocks. Back in here, I have a little in-ground pondless water fountain. So under the ground here, I, I dug a big hole and I inserted a planter pot and then I put a lid on it and I put a pump down in it and the pump is solar powered and it spurts up water onto these rocks. Now it's a solar powered pump so the solar panel is right here 
it's not currently getting any sun on it, but when it does get sun on it, it spouts water up. So. And a lot of you found my channel because of that bird bath bubbler fountain video that I published two years ago. So many of you have come to my channel because you saw that video. If you are one of those, say hi in the comments. I'd love to say hi to you. But this is what I did with my bubbler bird bath uh, fountain project. The solar panel sits here, gathers sun, mostly in the morning. We're, we're out of the sun pattern now. Um, and then it's just this little rock fountain situation here. And I've seen frogs and toads sitting on those rocks and just basking in the water that's there. And the hostas and the violets generally cover it up. So it's just this nice little moist spot down in there um, that uh, amphibians could come and take advantage of. So, well, that's about it for my bird catering business here at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I want to invite you to visit the Luji website or visit their uh, site on Amazon. Um, look at their bird feeder products. They have a lot of different shapes of the hummingbird feeder. They're all blown glass, uh, but some of them are uh, in, like there's a hot air balloon shape. There are balls, spheres. I got one that's, I think, an ice cream twist. Um, lots of different shapes, and they all have pretty colors as well. If you decide to make a purchase from Luji, you can put in a coupon code right here, this one, and you'll get 20% off your purchase. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're having fun in your gardens, watching the birds or otherwise, and I hope I'll see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.